If you're anything like me, you grew up with the Honda Accord being a household name when you were a kid. Well, imagine for a second you come down on Christmas Day expecting to get an upgraded Honda Accord this year for Christmas, and you're opening up the gift wrapping and you're expecting to get the Xbox version of the Honda Accord. You unwrap it, you open up the box, and all of a sudden, you see an Acer laptop in there. For me, this is what unwrapping the Honda Accord felt like, and it was extremely aggravating because I was expecting to see so much more hip and so much more fun coming out of the box. And instead, we got this sterilized version of what was once extremely fun to even anticipate getting the new version of. It feels sterile. It feels like Honda came down and said, guys, grow up with this thing, will you? The front looks okay, like just okay. The back feels like they printed out a better looking rendering off of the computer, but it got smudged by somebody's coffee. And one of the designer goes, hey, this actually looks better. And they decided to keep it. I love that the majority of the six trims being offered on the Honda Accord are hybrids. Specifically, four of the six trims, starting with the Sport Hybrid, are going to be hybrid powertrains. What this means is that for, for $30,000, you could likely see a Honda Accord with a fantastic fuel economy. However, in sterilizing the Honda Accord and giving all of them a hybrid motor and just making it feel super corporate, they also did away with coupe models and they did away with manual transmissions. You are no longer able to get a coupe Honda Accord. You're no longer able to get a manual transmission Honda Accord. Why didn't you just remove the Honda Accord model name altogether? Back to the whole fuel economy thing, 32 miles per gallon combined on the gas model and 48 miles per gallon combined on the hybrid. The interior is definitely a hit. I'm loving the sleekness of the interior. You even get a lot of cool tech that's not typically available with Honda ever. Honda has not been known for their infotainment systems, but they definitely changed that on this Honda Accord. You get a Google Assistant in the new Honda Accord infotainment system. You get Apple CarPlay, all the cool stuff, and you even get a huge back seat and huge trunk. Not that the back seat and trunk weren't big before, in the Honda Accord, but this definitely screams out awesome Uber option. Something that bothers me in New England is the fact that they haven't started offering an all wheel drive Honda Accord yet. Not that this is a big deal. Actually, in theory, I never expected the Accord or the Camry to be offered with an all wheel drive. But the fact that the, that the Camry is being offered with an all wheel drive and the Accord isn't makes it a huge problem for me because most people in New England, whenever they're faced with an option of getting an all wheel drive or non all wheel drive, they'll usually pick the all wheel drive. I remember when the LX was priced out at around $24,000 more than 10 years ago. So the fact that pricing has stayed somewhat reasonable compared to what it was about 10 years ago is a major plus for me. If we're seeing the LX going for about 28K now, that's a major deal. The LX was going for about 24 to 25,000 about 10 to 12 years ago. Like when my brother got his Honda Accord LX back in 2012, I remember seeing an MSRP of about $24,000, which was obviously was negotiated down to like 19,500, which is probably gonna be impossible now. But apples to apples here, MSRP to MSRP, we're not seeing too, too big of a difference. As far as inventory, we're seeing a pretty equal playing field among the top three Honda Accord, Toyota Camry, and Nissan Altima. According to cars.com, with inventory data that was scoured today, we've got about 12,000 roughly of each of the Honda Accord, Toyota Camry, and the Nissan Altima. So very, very good options available out there for you in terms of being able to go out to the dealership and actually getting your hands on one that's on the ground today. Something that you're going to find pretty cool, though, is that the bulk of the inventory that's available is on the EX. So the typical 
MSRP that you're going to see is going to be about roughly $31,005. That's going to be your typical 2024 Honda Accord EX. This is not too far away from the typical $27,000 to $28,000 that we were seeing before previously on other generation Honda Accord models, especially when we're comparing EX to EX. Personally, I'd be shooting for about 6.5% off of the MSRP. Here in Boston, I want to suggest going for about 6.5% off everywhere else. Don't ask me why I'm saying 6.5%. I've shot for a discount greater than 10%. Sometimes I've even hit 12% off of Honda Accord, yet I don't want to tell you to pursue 0% just because, oh, things are starting to normalize. No, I want you to shoot for right in between. Try and get a price of about $29,000 on this EX or just 6.5% off whatever your MSRP is. This month, the money factor dropped substantially over last month. The Accords program is going to be the best program of the three between the Accord, Camry, and the Altima. We've got a 61% residual and a money factor of 0 0.0017, which comes out to just about 4% APR on the lease. So plugging this all in into the lease calculator and assuming we're getting it at MSRP and I'll be doing another calculation at 6.5% off right after and assuming we're giving just our inception fees do it start so your first payment, acquisition fee, doc fee, registration, all that stuff do it start we would be talking about 420 bucks a month That's not including your state sales tax. And assuming we got a discount of about 6.5% off with a selling price of about $29,000, we would be talking about $361 a month, something right in line with what I would consider as reasonable for a Honda Accord in this day and age in 2023. Now, apples to apples, if we were to assume that these three vehicles had the same MSRP, the Accord would be sitting at about 423, while the Nissan Altima would be at about 477, and the Toyota Camry about 493. So you can see that the Honda Accord is definitely going to be your best bet at MSRP. That doesn't mean, though, that you're necessarily going to see the best deal on the Honda Accord if we're going to take into account possible discounts that you might get off of the car. So if you end up getting 4,000 or 5,000 off of a Nissan Altima, as opposed to say like 2,000 off of a Honda Accord, you're obviously gonna get a better lease deal on the Nissan Altima, just a better deal altogether. But assuming they sold all vehicles at the same price, not taking any money off, your best bang for your buck is gonna be on the Honda Accord because of the lease program that they're offering out of the gate. Personally, I'd still recommend the Honda Accord. If you can get over the exterior looks, which I guess aren't too, too bad. If you can get over that, I think that it's still a good option. And I'd even consider leasing right now as being a decent option as well because of how the lease program has evolved over last year and previous years. You guys, in the description below, you'll find resources so that you can shop around for the very best possible deal on this 2024 Honda Accord, as well as any vehicle that you might be looking for. If you found this information useful, please consider subscribing. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.